Royal family, right here with you, holy defense. Live and direct, just to hear myself for Titus, it's really cool. We glorify life given the keep of life. Yes, Robert. Thanks to those who are here, those who are coming in, just spending a moment with you. I want to highlight, you know, something as it relates to the Osiris mystery and Haile Selassie. Take it from me, you never this aspect. Yeah, I know we speak of it from that. Days of the master of ceremonies until such time. It only means we don't have to go over what we usually go over. We're going to carry to another level. Thanks for your presence, man. again, give thanks for joy, give thanks for happiness, give thanks for the black Christ in the flesh. And of course, as I said, going through, even at this moment, just holding a meditation here, yes, give thanks somewhat of our own um, chalice talk, preparing for this evening's Tiger's Nest. Remember, the Tiger's Nest radio program is a radio program that comes to you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. sharp. 
that is on radio and with the international flavor, the universal spice. Of course, Honorable Priest Isaac, your host. And of course, for those who know not how to get there, it's the, 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 the website of the Institute, which is priestisaacinstitute.com, priestisaacinstitute.com. Definitely, and usually the link is in the description below. If it's not there, I will be getting it there in a few moments. But give thanks for your presence, each and every one, those who are just coming in and joining us as we are holding the meditation. As I said, really preparing for the Tiger's Nest this evening. Um, and those of you who were there with us previous night, you know, that program we did as it relates uh, to uh, the mystic with Ronald Reagan, you know, the anniversary of him being shot the 30th of March, passed a few days ago. But we did a very interesting program, you know, uh, again, uh, on the subject of Ronald Reagan and his seat, and also Pope John Paul II. And we highlighted Revelation chapter 13, specifically, and when they both were shot. One literally shot on the 13th of, of, of May, and of course, the 30th of, of March, third month, 30th day. The third verse in that same Revelation 13 highlights, and one of the, the head of the beast was wounded, you know, and the, 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 the beast didn't die, and, and the beast was healed, and the whole world marveled at the beast and the they gave power to the, the beast and the dragon. They worshiped the beast and the dragon because the dragon not too long gave the power to the beast. Listen, family, what we're going to do, eh? Because that's why these programs, we they're, they're exclusively radio. I know you put these things on the YouTube, you come to watch it a second time, it's gone. And you know, if they have to take down too many videos too fast, when you come a second time, the channel is gone. <laughs> yeah. So give thanks for Radio Anu. That's why we created Radio Anu, and that's why we are very thankful. Me, heart of appreciation to all of you who support Radio Anu. You know, just, just even coming to Radio Anu and we say, hey, listen, man, we ain't going to continue this discussion here. You got to join us on radio and because you appreciate the level of what we are bringing, you understand. And you are, you you also comprehend, you know, the type of world we are living in. So what I'm going to do after the program this evening, Tiger's Nest program, uh, I'm going to rebroadcast the Tiger's Nest from previous evening, which is Rana Reagan. Basically, if you didn't hear it, Believe me, you would want to hear it because it's nothing, again, that we would have been speaking about in too much depth on the YouTube. Plus, after that program, I mean, you just want to stick it out. After that program, there's a special program, uh, a bonus Tiger's Nest that you want to stay tuned for as well. So this is a very a serious vibration that I'm, you know, I'm encouraging everyone to be a part of definitely this evening. So it's like three massive tiger's nests in a row right here on Radio Anu. And remember, of course, that is 7 p.m. That's when we start. So live and direct, well, well, all of them are live. We're always live. Even if you're listening to a recording, it's still live. <laughs> but I mean, the actual program that begins at 7. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm Sealed with that program again, I will be as they would call it replaying, but we ain't playing at all. The program uh, previous evening, as it relates to Mr. Ronald Reagan, beautiful. Now, again, what I wanted to highlight here is the Osiris mystery, but the, the Osiris mystery as it relates to Orion. In fact, Orion should be the title as well, and we will. Put Orion in the title because now again the understanding of the Osiris. I'll take a, a moment there. They say life and death and rebirth, uh, the god of life, but you don't know, you, you know, 
the God of life, you know, we not the God of you know, death. But the thing is, the, the the understanding of the science, that's what it really means. But to go break down the words right now is not really the meditation. But listen to me good. I'm sure most ones comprehend the Osiris link and the understanding of, you see, I was listening to a brother giving an explanation the other evening. And uh, within his, his word sound, he was saying, listen now, the, 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 the Bible and the hieroglyphs, and he was speaking of all the holy books, and he was saying these things are just mythology. These are just allegory. Allegory has become a very, very uh, prominent uh, word right now as such uh, widely used as you know I should say allegory mm -hmm. there was a time when when we would have lectured and we say allegory someone always would be in the audience that would raise their hand and stop you and ask you what is an allegory <laughs> when, you, when you use the term esoteric there's someone who would always say, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Yes, pardon me. Um, what do you mean by esoteric? Now, nobody has to ask you that because these words, they come like a dime a dozen, as they would say. Everybody's all oh, well, allegory. Well, you know, that's allegory. You know, some and some of these individuals need to raise their hand because they're just using the term. Because allegory and esoteric and, and symbolic and they may be related, but they 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 are they they different things as such, you know the myth and the mythos and mythology. So sometimes you may actually use the term out of place as such. But anyway, the point I'm making is that at that time, that whole understanding of the 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 science of the Asa, I was listening to the brother. So the brother was stressing that. These things are not literal. They're just symbolic. And again, it dawned on me like, you know, sometimes we can't, we have to be careful. We don't want to be throwing away the baby with the bath water. And that's what a lot of us do. Now, we, we are understanding this. We are coming out of a terrible time, a time of serious enslavement and serious persecution, and, and then a moment of ostr uh, being ostracized and, and Jim Crow. And we can talk on and on and on and on. But this is a different time now. This is a time when responsibility has to kick in. And we have to evolve. Really, in our theology, in our understanding of things, we definitely have to evolve. The God that we talk about is waiting on us in the, the highest realms to evolve until we reach to the stage where the God is. So we can only reach to that stage when we evolve. So again, we don't want to be dogmatic. We don't want to be religious. We just want to be realistic. And again, that's why I did the program. Uh, who is God? Just about three weeks, as they said ago. Who is God? When I was highlighting, first of all, who God is in the sense of Odin. You know that whole story. I don't have to go through that with you. And then I put that aside. So you understand where the term comes from. You understand where the name comes from. Look at a picture of God. And I pulled it up, which is Odin. Push that aside. Then now we went into the reality. Even an atheist can believe in what I'm saying here or agree, I should say, with what I'm saying here. Listen, man, there must be. It's only common sense. An intelligent nucleus. Your imagination now, by the moment I say intelligent nucleus, your imagination may, may you know, encourage you to vision something because every time I say so they, there's an image I always get in my mind it's not a sin but it's beyond a vision it's beyond seeing something the intelligent 
nucleus. There is an intelligent nucleus. I don't have to say at the center. The fact that I said nucleus really highlights that it is central to everything that exists. So there is an intelligent nucleus that governs all that there is. So when you get a cut and it naturally will heal in due time and in due season, that is the intelligent nucleus at work, just working. You may pick a bush or put a bit of aloes on the same cut and that would speed up the process. That's the intelligent nucleus working there because the same aloe that you may have clipped the tip of the, the leaf of the aloe, it's called a leaf. And when you return, that same aloe will have sealed up itself with a, a beautiful uh, sort of protection and has made itself whole. That's the intelligent nucleus at work. Creation, uh, 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 conception, procreation, the water cycle of evaporation, condensation, and rain. <laughs> it's the intelligent nucleus. Everything that you see, life, all the different dimensions. Follow me good. The different parallel worlds. No, not the other universes. Not in gossip. There's only one universe. If you if if you belong to a, a school of thought that gives this universe a size, and then you're saying, hey, beyond this, there's another universe. Well, that means your understanding of a universe was incorrect. The, the term uni means one. So the universe is everything. Whether you know where it ends, whether you know the size, whether you know what else exists, that's not the point. Whatever exists, wherever it is, in whatever dimension, parallel worlds by the thousands, all of that is a part of the universe, the all. And the, this intelligent nucleus that is in charge of everything is also in charge of all the worlds. It only makes sense. If it's not, well, that's not the intelligent nucleus I'm talking about. This intelligent nucleus obviously got to transcend time and space and worlds because the worlds and the space and the time, once they're there, they must be governed by some intelligence. So there's a central intelligence. Ain't not hard to believe. That's why the hair grows out of your head. You may say, well, it's, it's just something that's naturally put in motion. Well, I understand. I agree. I agree. I'm not saying some spooky God came and intervened and said, you know, stop, grow, grow, move. You know, the cut, heel cut. No. It's natural. It's nature. This is it. Nature follows the law of this intelligent nucleus which I will say at least from my humble understanding which we would have falsely misnamed God so the intelligent human beings now and that's why we can go into anthropology and archaeology and hey give thanks for those who are coming in you know uh, I'm honored that you could spend a moment with me I just said let me spend a moment with the family as we prepare for the tiger's nest this evening and the topic this evening is when you're coming you will see but for sure <laughs> for sure after the tiger's nest we will be um as I say rebroadcasting that program that everyone was talking about on Ronald Reagan, you definitely want to tune in this evening, Tiger's Nest Radio, and to really take that one in. And as I said, after the Ronald Reagan program, we have a special um, Tiger's Nest bonus that you want to sit in and sup in with if you're really interested in um, knowing what's really going on 
in this world at the moment, right now. I mean, this is a serious thing. But anyway, uh, I, 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 we're getting deeper here. So where were we? So as it relates to the the the, the whole cycle now. So nature, oh, the intelligent ones, these ones that we revere in history. Take a man like Imhotep there, the Zosia, the great, the great engineers, the great architects, the super geniuses. What did they do? They had a great understanding or comprehension of the actions of the intelligent nucleus. You see, first of all, the intelligent nucleus would have designed the surroundings in such a way that it would appear as if this intelligent nucleus would have painted a story on a canvas above us, which we call the sky. This intelligent nucleus is serious. Visual arts. This is what Picasso, not Picasso, what's the other fellow name? Who, who was it? Leonardo or Michelangelo, I think it was, in the Sistine, in the Sistine Chapel, you know, uh, on the roof and in the domes, you see the angels flying around and God touching Adam. And when I say God, I mean God touching Adam, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, up in the skies and the little naked baby angels around there, Cupid and the other fella must be Pollux and Castor, yeah. That is just a mockery, really, of when you look into the heavens and you observe the zodiac going over the dome of the heavens. Yes, and the ecliptic belt constellations and the constellations in general, and those of us in the northern hemisphere, and we look to the north and we see we see the carousel as such, you know, of of the moving stars within the northern circumpolar vibration. It's deep and it's and, and it's it's the the almighty, the intelligent nucleus that is performing all of this, but it's mathematics, it's geometry, you know, it's deep science, it's it's uh it's so many different things. It's now radio astronomy and waves, X waves and gamma rays. So we're dealing with individuals, ancient Africa, ancient Kush. That's why we take the time to study our history. That would have understand or understood the sciences of, of the heavens and the sciences of the earth as well. So chemistry, physics, and biology, marine biology, and astrobiology, all of that. They had that comprehension. Obviously, you could never, ever build the great pyramid of Giza, and you did not comprehend all what I'm talking about here. I know one person could know it and everybody else just followed the instructions. That needed a team of super scientists and that's the great pyramid and the second pyramid and the third pyramid and the pyramid of King Dizosia and the temple of Karnak and Abu Simbel and we can go on and on and on. This needed scientists and mathematicians and engineers and architects of the highest standards to prepare these monuments, some of which uh, I would have mentioned a moment ago are uh, even hundreds and a few thousands uh, of years apart from each other. So the civilization is strong. But these temples, these monuments, you know, and then the writing system and the hieroglyphs, what, 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 what where, did they, where did they get this from? Where did this science and understanding come from? Again, it is mirroring the heavens. As I said in that lecture, when you observe the hurricane and you observe, what do you call this stuff there? The galaxy. When you observe the solar system and you observe the atom, you can see the similar vibration within them, the, the movements, the spiral uh, energy and, and so forth. Because nature mirrors nature. You know, that's why the Fibonacci 
series of numbers which create the golden spiral comes into conversation. And then you see the golden spiral in the horn of the ram and the golden spiral also seen specifically in the, the pine cone and the golden spiral seen in the petal of the flowers and the golden spiral seen in the, the seashell, the golden spiral. And also when you look at the, the pyramid complex at Giza and you map it out properly, including Haremaket, which is the Sphinx, the golden spiral can be seen as well because those who will, would have built these monuments, those who would have created the language system, those of the first civilization, they understood how to take the heavens and the message that it was given and converted that same message into a language system, into an art form, into monuments, into infrastructure, into dance, into rhythm, into music. That's all. That's all. And this is why, listen to me, family. This is why we did the program about two or three months ago when we were highlighting the professor from Zimbabwe, when he was showing us that every single African tribal dance even the Ethiopian Orthodox church dance is different than the regular Christianity is the, the movement of the, the stars. That's what he said. He said that every African dance, not just the Dogans, you see, that's how they, 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 they trick us and have us on this Dogan thing like it's Dogans. And do you know there, there, was, a, there was a tribe that they could see? You know, the, the serious beast style. We passed that stage, Rust. Every tribe could sing the serious beast style. Don't fool us. Don't try to bottle us in now somewhere. The bozos could see. The cookies of Uganda could see. Mm -hmm. Bozo and cookie, eh? I wouldn't even stop there right now. So, but what I'm showing you now is that is that every dance, somebody had to can see the stars, if every dance <laughs> of every tribe, you know, according to the experts who sat on the, um, the same panel of experts that UNESCO brought together to prepare the document, the history of Africa, which came into the series that BBC presented. Them is who I talk about. That's the source of this information I'm giving you. Every single African tribal dance is mirroring the heavens, the cosmic. Whether it's the galaxy, whether it's the planets, whether it's some celestial cosmic shower to come that returns or comet that returns every 200 years and eclipse. That's how we roll. We are ancient astronomers. So what we are doing, we are we are taking the the image, the 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 the, the expression of the intelligent nucleus. You know, that that is why in religion you're taught to look up in the sky for God. Yes, it's, it's a kind of fairy thing, but interestingly. When you look up in the sky <laughs> and you study the stars, you really do get a better understanding of God. You know, it's like reverse psychology. We say God is not in the sky, but God is in the sky for real. Because Orion, the constellation that represents the Lord of the skies, and, and I'm going to get into that right, 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 right now. He's in the sky. Hope everyone is blessed, eh? You dance <laughs> for your presence with us. And you know, I think I have to say here. You know, I have to say here. This is why it is necessary. Our ancient astronomy course. How many of the family is on our ancient astronomy course? No, I'm very serious. Here. Because this is this is obviously beyond just entertainment. Understanding 
ancient astronomy from an Afrocentric point of view is very important. And if we're going to be talking, and if we're going to be saying this and that, this is not just guess. We pass the stage of the Bible is a solar book. And Jesus and the 12 disciples is the sun and the 12 constellations. What else we like to say? Uh, when is December? That's when the sun dies for three days. And it line up with the cross, the southern cross. What else we say? And when the sun dies and it rises again and when the sun coming with the clouds of the heavens, that's when the Bible says the sun coming with the clouds of the heavens. And he, has, and he shall have the crown upon his head. That is when you see him having the crown, the sun with the crown coming off the coroner. They call it the coroner of the sun. The coroner, it does mean crown. So that's the crown Christ had, you know, in the Bible because the son of God is the son of God, S-O-N, S-U-N, you know? Yeah. When you see the setting sun and you see that nice reflection running on the water, they say that's when the sun walk on the water. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we've been... <laughs> oh, you never hear that one. <laughs> Okay, but what I'm saying, the righteous people, believe it or not, that is not what impressed us in ancient time. We deal with a deeper mathematics than that. I don't think I'll have to convince anyone that Haile Selassie is the fulfillment of Osiris. Master of Ceremonies, Haile Selassie, is the fulfillment of the Osiris. In fact, we have written a book entitled The Heavens Declare the Glory, Rastafari and the Cosmos. I would invite anyone to visit our website, Priest Isaac Institute dot com and you can get a copy of that book it's an ebook so you could start to read it right away the heavens declare the glory beautiful um, uh, presentation if i do say so myself gives you a clear understanding also of the osiris mystery and how it's connected to emperor haile selassie the first now, one of the main things I want to highlight about the mystery, and it's not me, that it is the it's the world referred to it as the Osiris mystery. We already uh, <laughs> we have already unraveled the mystery. Osiris born in Ethiopia just the other evening. We were speaking about one of those first official trips the emperor made to Arabia, and we were reading the story at the same time when they said um, an Osiris uh, first trip was to Arabia. And, and then, of course, the 72 that came to the banquet of Osiris, the same 72 that came to the coronation of the King of Kings, that, that Time magazine and all these magazines and newspapers all over the world. That's the source. You see, people say, where's your source? Check the Time magazine. 72 nations came to Ethiopia to officially bow before Haile Selassie the first, you know, and some of them crooks as well, because it was the same 72 according to the Osiris mystery that, that showed um, uh, uh, Osiris in the coffin and, and, and if eventually cut him into 14, some say 16 pieces, depending on which glyph that you, that you read, you understand. He went in the underworld for, for five years. Again, different gospel, different thing, but it's deep. Because again, Haile Selassie the first <laughs> five years of official um, absence from the throne from the fifth of May nineteen thirty six to the fifth of May nineteen forty one exactly five years apart maybe in the fifth month and of course the fifth day fulfilling that Osiris mystery so so one of the main aspects of it now and the sixteen pieces of course are Article sixteen that the 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 League of Nations really they totally turned their back on, which was really what they would have been able to use to even stop the aggression of Italy and Ethiopia. So anyway, the main point here now is that in the Osiris story, the Osiris mystery, let me turn there just for a moment, it clearly speaks of 
Osiris or Asa, which is the proper term, Asa. When he resurrected, he literally resurrected to become the constellation of Sahu. The constellation of Sahu is Orion. Well, Orion is what the Greeks call it. Osiris is what the Greeks call it. But the constellation is Sahu. And the character is Asa. So Asa ascended. Blessed by Isis, blessed by Anpu, blessed by Tahuti, Asa ascended and became Sahu. Now, we are saying here that Emperor Haile Selassie I, again, once you comprehend the Osiris, I, I don't want to try to, I mean, we've been doing that for decades now, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah, so, um, yes. And again, I would have pointed you to, you know, a documentary, The Master of Ceremonies. It's actually on the YouTube, very easy to find. And even the book, The Heavens Declare, just in case this is like something totally out of the blue, never heard anything about Haile Selassie being the same as Osiris. Plus, I know I would have gone through it extremely quickly a moment ago, but if you're watching this on a rerun, and even on the live, and you just go back and listen to what I just said again about three minutes ago, as fast as it was, and you just listen and make the points, you will see in that quick, quick, quick run how Haile Selassie, without a doubt, is the fulfillment of Osiris. So this is why I was saying earlier, when, 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 when we throw away the baby with the bath water, oh, this is just symbolic. No, ain't nothing just symbolic. No, no, I agree that maybe the, the historical story that we like to fashion behind of a lot of the allegories. Yes, I, I agree that the, the literal historical story in many cases are a bit off, way off, and some of them, it just didn't go so at all. But you see, ancient allegory. I mean, I mean, when the right doctor prescribed the right medicine for you, you know you are in good hands. We're dealing with medicine that has been prescribed for us by our physicians. I'm telling you that every African tribe that has a tribal dance according to our griots is a dance that is literally mimicking or, if you say, mirroring the movements of the cosmos. These are the same people that would have taken the understanding they have of the cosmos, of the, of the heavens, and would have put it in, and have put it, pardon me, in writing, in glyph form, in dance, in music, in story. That's what it is. So everything that you, 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 you have as agency, Again, from the buildings, from the dance, from the different traditions. You can talk about Orisha. You can talk about uh, 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 whatever have you from the different traditions in ancient Africa. You see what I'm saying? It is not something one's just made up out of their head. It is coming from an ancient time. It is coming from an ancient wisdom. It is coming from ancient ones who understood the heavens. Again, not just the, the, the astronomy as such, you know, but the physics of the heavens, the biology. There is a sub subject called astrobiology. You understand? The chemistry of the heavens, astrophysics, um, radio astronomy. You understand? We already comprehended these things. That is why the civilization of that time was even beyond the civilization of this time. The pyramids, they don't just line up with the stars. Remember, the pyramids were like dynamos. They would be able to take the natural, the natural free energy that is around us and create electricity. We see it on the walls of Kemet again, the bulb with the filament looking like a snake. We see it in uh, 
in the temple at Abydos with the, the hawk, the Black Hawk helicopter, uh, the hovercraft and the tank, you know what I mean, already seen in glyph form at least 3,000 years ago. So our understanding uh, uh, of, of, of how to harness the natural energy of the heavens and the earth. I mean, we could build, build pyramids and we couldn't light a light bulb. Don't fool yourself. Yeah. They have an experiment we did in school with a nail and a copper wire and a, and some other thing and a battery or something and it light the bulb. Come on. And we could build pyramid. <laughs> So when we drew the bulb on the walls of Kemet with the filament, we must have been hallucinating then. That's a deep hallucination there, you see. So I'm, I'm saying all of this, you know, just to get the mind prepared for where we are going. Mm. All of the allegory, my bro and my sis, allegory as allegorical as it is, do not disqualify the literal aspect of it. Allegory, that is just allegory, is fairy tale. That is why we are very strong with the concept of, quote unquote, the God in you there. That is something we just, another thing we just kind of broad brush. Not only, quote unquote, the God in you, each and every one of us, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is another level now. That's why you're governed by different types of angels. But I'm speaking of Asa. Haile Selassie fulfill Asa. But there are other people amongst us, maybe you, that carry the strong Asa spirit. It could be a strong Hebrew spirit. It could be a strong Avi spirit. That's why you're right, constellation is very important. It could be a strong, um, another um, any entity spirit, it could be a strong Agun spirit, uh, Obatala spirit, Ashun spirit. You know, you may have a combination of, of two different entities within you. There's nothing wrong. When Elijah disappeared, he said a double portion of his spirit went on Elisha. These things are real. It's like you have a spirit and you, you have twin flames and all sorts of different things happening. So we cannot be afraid to enter into this kind of thinking and into this zone. When you free up your mind, that's why a lot of the teaching sometimes people say, boy, listen. One, one, one fellow was saying in a comment there, I, I speak of too many different things. <laughs> I said, wow, all right. That's interesting. I, I, I took that as a badge of honor. Holy Manuela. <laughs> Celestia, Ja, Rastafari. I... All right. Okay. Let's go to school here. Uh, let me let me move out of the picture here a moment. So I'm sure you have a clarity. Okay, so this is now 2024, right? Right now. It's 4:49. That's the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> but this is now. Uh, the fourth month it is April the third day. Beautiful. All right. Now, just a quick, and this is why ancient astronomy family, get the ancient astronomy course. If you're not on the ancient astronomy course, you will not regret it. Those of you who have children, especially those who are preteen, yes, you will not regret it. If you are a subscriber, there's so many subscribers on the Tigers Nest Radio program. If you are a subscriber, you get the Ancient Astronomy course. You're already a subscriber, you know. You get the Ancient Astronomy course for only $100. All of our courses that are not um, recurrent payment at all, whether it's an option or, you know, you, you get the courses for half price. That includes the evolution course and the other courses that are actually being prepared as we speak. So, and those of you who are not subscribers to the Tiger's Nest, all you have to do is subscribe. And right away, you have access to the half off of the courses. And um, once you continually subscribe, you know, all of 
uh, what you have in store for you. But anyway, the, I'm, I'm really trying to encourage you, man. The ancient astronomy groups, there's no reason why, straight up, from my heart, I mean this from my heart, there's no reason why every family should not be gazing on the ancient astronomy course. Especially those of us who are adults that have children. Sometimes, to be honest, I mean, we, we need to take more pride in, in edu educating our children in the right way. Straight up, you have seen samples of the ancient astronomy course. And you understand and can see the value. A hundred dollars in a month. Eh, eh. <laughs> what is this? No, straight up. Remember, the course at this time is one ninety nine. That's really what it is. That alone is of the value as well for for what you get in the different chapters. You know, it will last you at least a month and a half, and certified course after. Hmm. But anyway, family, when you go to the ancient astronomy course, you understand exactly how to map the heavens properly. So those of you who are already on the course, and even the young little ones that are watching with their parents that are on the international homeschool program, you will understand that the heavens have latitude and longitude as well. The longitude is right ascension, and the latitude is declination. Very good. So in the heavens, we also deal with coordinates. All right. Now, I want to show you something, family. This is very brilliant. In the heavens, you have a celestial equator, which is on line zero, just like the terrestrial equator. I'm sure you have an understanding, you know, of why you have an equator and why you have a celestial pole. So if, you know, don't let, if the flat earth is right next to you, no disrespect to anyone, don't let them distract you now and say, hey, listen, man, you know why? Because it's a dome. And no, 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 no. We have programs where we would have debunked all of that. So, so it's just because of, obviously, the rotation and the earth revolving. All right, positive. So this is the impression. It's all about impression. You see, this is why when you get the understanding of how many light years these different stars are away from each other and the angle and the planet, all of these things gives it a better appreciation to the person that's observing it. Very good. So you have a celestial equator. And the sun will be on this celestial equator during the time of the equinoxes, the spring equinox and the fall equinox. Good. Now, Mintaka. Mintaka is a star that is extremely close to the equator of the heavens. And it doesn't necessarily touch the equator of the heavens uh, as such. You know, it gets very close. But the point I'm making is this. This is serious, eh? Now, this is Orion. For those who do not know, you would see the head of Orion. And then you have the, uh, the shoulders of Orion. Then you have the famous Orion's belt, uh, these three stars. And then you have the feet of Orion. Orion or Sahu. You see him with his sword up in the air. And then you see him with his shield in his left hand, you know, pointing forward towards the bull Taurus that is almost like on the attack. All right, good. Now, what you would notice is that on the declination line, you have the head of Orion, is on positive 10 degrees. I'm sure you see that. Now, on below the equator, what would be south, but it's negative, you have the feet of Orion on negative 10 degrees. So what is interesting here is that the constellation of Sahu, which they call Orion, is perfectly fitted between positive 10 degrees and negative 10 degrees. That's interesting. With the center, which is zero degrees, the equator, literally almost hitting 
the star Mintaka. Now it looks so from here, but if you go deep into the actual uh, uh, position here, you will notice that the star is not actually on the equator. Okay, good. So again, the ancient astronomers would have been very much, I want you to listen to me, family, please. The ancient astronomers would have been very much aware of the fact that this great constellation, one of the, the more outstanding, if not the more, most outstanding constellation, Orion or Saturn, they would be definitely aware of, of the fact that the head of Sahu is, is hitting the 10 degrees declination positive and the feet is just standing on the 10 degrees negative declination. All right. I'm sure everyone understands this. Now, when we say the ancients, we're talking about maybe, let's say, 3,000 BC, 4,000 BC, 5,000 BC. So are we saying that in 4,000 BC, 5,000 BC and all of that time, especially when they were building the pyramids, et cetera, et cetera, are you telling me that they understood that the constellation Sahu or Orion was perfectly in between a zone of the sky that was governed, you know, by this energy here, 10 degrees north and 10 degrees south. Okay, that's, that's a nice fit. What say you? And Orion was perfectly on the belt. Um, the belt was perfectly right there on the equator. Are we saying that that's how they looked at it in the ancient times? <laughs> No, that's not how they looked at it at the ancient times. No, what do you mean, priest? Oh, that the ancients had such great understanding. They, what you are aware of now, they must have been aware of it then. I agree. But in their time, Sahu or Orion was not in the same position that it is today. Huh? Follow me good, and I want everyone to look at the screen. In their time, Sahu or Orion was not in the position that it is today. All right. Now, we are going to return as such to the past. Now, watch it good. For those of you who are taking your time to observe this. We're going to go, mm, let's say, 2114 BCE. That's what's happening here. Now, look at it good. Look at the equator of the heavens. 2114 BCE. So that's about 14, uh, 4,000 plus years ago. Now, 4,000 plus years ago, if you were to come out and look at the night sky, and you see the constellation Sahu. Sahu or Orion would be considered mm, relatively a southern constellation. What? Orion or Sahu would be considered a southern constellation 4,000 years ago. How, how, how did that happen? Well, again, as I always tell our astrological friends, the heavens is alive. The heavens is a living entity. It's not frozen in time. So we can't rely on Merlin and Archimedes uh, uh, star charts anymore because time has moved on. But still, family, follow me good. Naturally, the wobble of the earth and rotation and, of course, the great year. So as you can see, in the year 2114 BCE, you can see that the head of Orion or Sahu was just below the celestial equator. And, and Mintaka, 
which is the star we have been highlighting. Mintaka is very far away from the equator. In fact, Mintaka is just below the 10 degree <laughs> negative declination. It's about 12 degree uh, declination here, negative. All right. So how did Sahu or Orion reach so far south? Again, it's just the natural movements of the heavens. Orion or Sahu or these set of stars, they ain't going nowhere. It's the earth and how it moves throughout the ages that gives this picture in the heavens and the story is told. And all of this is the design of the intelligent nucleus. Now I'm going to show you something. We are going to watch Sahu or Orion literally rise. When I say rise, as if somebody is coming out of the water. So if you observe, look at here, zero degrees. That's the celestial equator. And at this time, Sahu's head is underneath that line. But as time marches on, you will observe through the years and the millennia and the ages. You will notice Sahu or Orion literally rising to the point that you see its head coming over the equator until the point that it literally becomes the centerpiece of the heavens. Let me show you. Follow me, good family. We're not going to take too long because I... I do have to go and even get everything in order for the tiger's nest. Remember, you got to join me tonight on the tiger's nest, 7 p.m. sharp. Yeah, Radio Anu, priestisaacinstitute.com. All right, good. And, and, and remember, we will be uh, rebroadcasting after the tiger's nest. We will be rebroadcasting re the program that we did previous evening on Ronald Reagan and uh, Pope Paul II. You don't want to miss that, so make sure you're there. And then after that, it's like three programs in a row, we're going to give you a special bonus Tiger's Nest that you, you have not heard. You, believe me, no one heard it. Believe me. But anyway, so it's going to be a beautiful night this evening. Make sure you have yourself in order. Now look at this. 1936 BCE. 1936 BCE. 1936 BCE. Very good. Mintaka, which is that star that stands out for us on the Orion belt, Sahu's belt. Now, in 1646 BCE, look at it good. Mintaka is on the 10 degree, the negative 10 degree declination. So in Earth, description 10 degrees south. Mintaka is 10 degrees south. 10, negative 10 degree declination. Declination, negative 10 degree. That is where Mintaka is in 1646. But look at this. Look at this. The head of Orion. The head of Orion is literally touching the equator of the heavens. All right. So, so this is very interesting. Now, remember, there's about three stars making up the, 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 the head of Orion. So you have me, 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 Isa, because it's me, 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 Isa. Yeah, that, that's all right. Me, Isa. Remember, Isa is Christ's name in Arabic. Isa. Many of these stars uh, have been given Arabic names. Isa. So the, 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 the head, the top, the crown of Asa, the star is me, Isa. Because me, um, it's me, Isa. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah, also known as Heka. Okay, very good. So, Mi'isa, or the head of Asar, or let me know, say uh, Asar, which is Sahu. I hope you're following me, family. Remember Sahu, after resurrecting, went up into the heavens to become um, Orion. Let me say that over again. I have all the names that, you know, in one basket here. When Orion, whose right name is Asa, all right, he is the one that was cut up into 16 pieces. Okay. Not Sahu, not Orion. I get you. 
we are talking about Cyrus, also called Asa. I hear you. Right. Good. He's the one that went into the underworld five years. I hear you. And resurrected. Very good. All right. After he resurrected, he went up into the sky. Mm -mm. That's all familiar. Shh, don't tell him. And he became <laughs> the constellation of Orion. But in that tongue, we refer to his movement to the heavens as he became Sao. Now, when they told that story, are you listening to me, Father? This is why the heavens declare the glory of Haile Selassie. When they told that story, the constellation of Orion was not the law of the heavens. Is Osiris real? Well, not the glyph, not the green god, but the real Asa will come at some time. And yes, I know Asa dwells in everybody and the spirit of Asa is inside of you and all the kings was Asa and all the kings was Horus. I agree. But that does not take away from the reality that Asa will come in a human form, in human flesh, to fulfill the prophecy of Asa. And that is Haile Selassie the first. And again, the ancients understood this because when they were speaking of Osiris becoming Orion, the Lord of the heavens, Orion was not the Lord of the heavens at that time, astronomically speaking. Maybe astrologically speaking, eh? maybe the astrologers. That's why, that's why Moses twist of the astrologers it's not astrologers we deal with you know ancient astronomy that's why in the bible god burn out astrology but he still tell you go and check the stars so how does that work yeah so uh thanks for everyone coming in Yes, yeah, so in the 1600s BC, we had the head of Asa, uh, uh, Sahu Pan Orion, touching the equator. So let's observe it. Let's look at how we move. So you see the time belt up here again, negative for minus, which is BC, 1646. Uh, 1647, I'm going uh, forward, isn't it? So 50, uh, 1637, 1627, okay, Mo moving by tens. Now, observe, just watch Sahu good. You will notice as we get closer to um, zero, year zero, look at Sahu rising or Orion. You see Orion is rising every, you know, I mean, every 300 years, you, you could say noticeably gone a reasonable distance. But it's not Orion alone rising, it's the whole heavens that is really going through that. I want you to watch it good, you know, because this is the point. So by, by 447 BCE, you could see now that Mintaka, or the whole belt of Orion, has uh, is literally above now the 10, the minus 10 uh, degree declination, but not yet to the equator, because of course this takes time. It's gonna take some time before it reaches to, the, to, to that part there. Okay, good. This is some serious vibration. So now as we uh, continue, so according to this, Mintaka is actually at five degrees here. Five degrees and 34 minutes and 34.4 seconds. That's where Mintaka is here. So, so in a period of a thousand years or so, Mintaka would have moved maybe around five degrees. So in about a thousand years or so, 
Min Taka would have moved approximately five degrees. I really hope, family, that you comprehend where we are here. So that is how the ancients understood the heavens. So the ancients would have already done their maths. The ancients understood that the time will come. They knew that, that a time will come when Orion or Sahu will be the Lord of the sky. When they gave that prophecy, I hope all the Egyptologists and of the conscious community listening, when they gave that prophecy of Asar and Osiris becoming Sahu, Orion, it was not time for that as yet. Orion would have to have been the Lord of the sky. Then we can talk about the prophecy being fulfilled. And Orion or Sahu was not the Lord of the sky when that prophecy was revealed. And we're talking about 10,000 years BC. 10,000 years BC. Sahu was almost down by the South Pole. You understand? Yeah, serious. But interestingly, you know, in fact, let, let's continue here before I tell you what's so interesting. Now, let's get closer to zero BC, uh, to the year zero, pardon me, to zero BC. Because that year zero is a mystic by itself, eh? Okay, good. So, 7 BCE, see here? And then 3 AD, basically similar. 3 AD, just 10 years apart from each other. And as you can see here at this time, you have you have uh, the declination uh, of of Sahu, not Sahu, but Mintaka. Now we're dealing with Mintaka specifically because this is this is the vibration we have to look at. Is now at four degrees, four degrees, one hour and thirty three minutes. All right, so let's keep moving up the age now. We're moving up the age. We're moving up the age. We reach now three AD. Oh, no, sorry, I'm going backwards there. <laughs> I gone into the BC. I'm a real ancient man for real, brother. All right, but we're moving up the age, and I want you to see Orion rising. Watch it as it rises. Watch it as it goes up. We're in 200 AD now. Watch it as it goes up. We're in 400 AD, Ch uh, Council of Chaldean. Watch it as it goes up. Watch it as it goes up. 711, uh, uh, the Moors enter Spain. Watch it as it goes up. Uh, uh, 11, 1200, Lalabella Temple building, watch it as it goes up. 14, uh, combustors and slavery, 16. Okay, bam, let me stop somewhere there. And I just randomly stopped. Eh? Okay. So we have 1730. Let's go back a little bit. Yeah. Now it's obvious. Let's say about, you know, 14, you see, 1393, you can clearly see Orion or Sahu has not fit properly yet, at least from a distance. But then for sure, where were these? Around 1713, 1733, mm -hmm. 1773, 17, right, 1830, around that time. Look at it good. Now, it's not exactly... If we're going to go into final detail, the position that Orion has today, you know, but it's basically in the same space. If we're going to move this to 2024 from 1830, it does not look from a distance that different. You know, you would have to read the direct coordinates to see the difference. And it might just be maybe, you know, an hour or two hours, but not necessarily a degree. I wonder if you follow what I'm saying. So it doesn't make that great difference. The point is, from the 1700s, the 1800s, I would say that Sahu or Orion would have secured itself in the position that it has now, where it is the Lord Sky. Family with me? You just watched everything I did, eh? You saw where Sahu was in 16-something BCE. The head was 
somewhere down um, in the southern celestial hemisphere. Well, you, you notice Sahu was rising and coming up and coming up to the northern celestial hemisphere. This is why I'm not with the upside down Africa thing. Eh? Nobody feel now. Eh? I know a lot of you champion that. No, I, I'm not upset. Eh? Believe me, you know, I'm not religious. Everybody have their own. But no, no you know, yeah. I don't want to go too deep into it. Eh? But if I'm going to judge the heavens, because in the heavens, north is up and south is down. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up. Look, his head is up to the north and his feet is to the south. Yeah. I like how Africa looks, the way it looks, when it looks like the man smoking the pipe. We turning Africa upside down and making it look like Barbados. I mean, no offense. But anyway, so the ancients, I'm saying, that would have brought forth the prophecy. Remember, eh, for those who are joining, you may need to see this from the beginning. But that is why we began by speaking not just of the intelligent nucleus, but how the intelligent human beings would have used the, the, the design, the canvas expression, the tapestry that the nucleus energy would have painted for us, which is constellations, stars, even the clouds. And then they would have created monuments using the scientific details of, of, of nature. That's why we brought in the Fibonacci and the golden spiral and all of this pi, epsilon, you know, the, uni, uri, the unitary number I, which is said to be the square root of the number one and phi. All of these things are seen embedded in the pyramids, embedded in the Sphinx, her and Aket, embedded in some of the mighty temples. So I'm showing you that the ancient ones obviously understood the geometry and the mathematics of nature and the heavens, and they would have put it into their designs. They would have put it into their dance. Everything was a mirror of the, the intelligent nucleus then. That's my point. So even their story, the Osiris story, the Heru story, the set, everything was geometry. It wasn't just a story. You understand, to tell the kids. It was deep. <laughs> you know, we bought fire and kids. Please stop calling children kids. I, I can't believe I hear Rastaman talking about and all the kids them going astray. Well, of course, if they're kids, they must. So even the story of the Assad, the hero, whatever, whatever the Ashun, the Agun, whatever. The Obatala, the, the Quatzo Cortel, the biblical narrative, it's some deep science. That's why the Bible is full of so much maths, deep maths, not just seven and threes, ten and that kind of stuff. And so, <laughs> some deep rooted, we've been through some of that with our episodes. Look how you could just decode Haile Selassie's name within um, a verse or two. Key names put together, you get the king name because it's a deep book to be decoded. Let's comprehend all of this. This is very, 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 very important. So I'm saying now that the ancients that would have created all of these great monuments, the the, the uh, Akhenaten and the Tutankhamun and the Amenhotep, all of these great ones would have known that in this time, Sahu Orion would be Lord of the Sky. When you read the Bible, eh, it talks about the prophets. All of the prophets would have been happy. You know, this was the day that the prophets were looking forward to. I think it was Christ telling his disciples this. And they, they were hoping they could have been in this day. Something of the sort. Why? Because they understood ancient astronomy. So, so the ancient astronomers 4,000 years ago understood where Orion would have been or Sahu would have been 4,000 years after. So they knew that the Osiris of this mystery here will be crystallized in approximately 4,000 years. Not 3,000 years, not 2,000 years, but in this time. Now, as I said, it is obvious. We're looking at, let's say, the, the early 1800s, where Sahu would have 
position itself. So anything after the 1800s or 1800, we are supposed to be looking for the coming of this Messiah, which is Osiris. Everything is mathematically correct. Because if we go deeper into this now, we can see that is why we have the exact coordinates of everything. And as you can see, the second literally moving here, even the coordinates are moving as we speak, minutely. But everything is set. So when Haile Selassie was born on the 23rd of July, 1892, Sahu or Orion was already secured as the Lord of the sky, the Lord of the heavens. Listen, all of us were born in the time when Asa or Osiris is secured as the Lord of the sky or the Lord of the heavens. So, 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 and, and as you can see, the time frame is a very large time frame. We're talking about at least a good five, seven hundred years. But for someone who would have laid down this prophecy 10,000 years ago, and an ancient astronomer to understanding that, listen, Osiris is rising. That's why you saw Orion rising, because Osiris or Asa would have to rise, literally rise up to become Orion, to become the Lord of the sky. And again, when you observe it, you saw it for yourself, that Orion or, or, or Asa, literally over a 4,000 year period and a longer time than that, came from the Southern hemisphere and literally rose up. That's what you're seeing here. Literally rose up to the point that you, you saw when his head was coming over the equator. Yeah. And right now, the belt, which is his waist, is on the equator right now as we speak. And the head is at the, the 10, positive 10 degrees declination. And his feet is perfectly on negative 10 degrees declination. So that's a perfect balance right now. And, and when that took place, in this perfect time, we have the birth of the King of Kings, Haile Selassie I. We have the coronation of the same King of Kings, Haile Selassie I. We have when he go into exile on the 5th of May, 1936, and resurrected, and resurrected on the 5th of May, 1941. The constellation of Orion perfectly set all at the same time. And then, of course, when he addressed the United Nation in 1963, which is really when historically the prophecy was fulfilled. That is when he gave them the abelic or the tekin. Remember the tekin itself or the abelic now represents the phallic of Asar. And that is the whole vibration of the resurrection of Asar. You understand? Remember Asar was resurrected when he literally went up into the heavens, when Isis put him together and they could not find the phallic. And this is why, according to the history of Ethiopian ancient Kemet, the phallic or the obelic represents the, the, uh, 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 the, the erect penis of Osiris. That's really what it represents. You understand? And I'm telling you, when Haile Selassie addressed the United Nations, in 1963, he literally gave them a replica of the obelisk of Aksum, the Tekken, which represents once again the phallic of Asa. But again, not just Asa or Osiris, but why it's so symbolic? Because that is the instrument that is at the center. Mm of Osiris resurrecting mm, to become Orion. And what is symbolic of Orion? He is the ruler of the heavens because half of him, as you can see, 
is on the northern hemisphere and the other half of him, as you can see, is on the southern hemisphere. This is 1963. And I'm showing you, oh, this is beautiful. That when Haile Selassie addressed the United Nations, it was then he became Orion because that was when we could say he's the only head of state to address the League of Nations in 63 and the United 36, pardon me, and the United Nations in 63. 36, 63. 36, the League of Nations, the only head of state to talk to that body there. In 63, the United Nations, and that made him the only head of state to speak to them both. And these are not just two bodies, you know, like a club, a chess club and, a, and, and some sort of, you know, other club. No, these are the two institutions in this modern time that has been crafted and designed to run the, the geopolitical business of the planet. The United Nations, which is seriously failing, and the League of Nations. And there's one man, one head of state that spoke to them both, that cannot change. And interestingly, it's Haile Selassie. And before he sealed that deal and spoke to the United Nations in 63, he gave them the symbol of Osiris Asa which is at the center of his resurrection before he became the ruler of the north and the south, one foot and water and one foot and land. And let me tell you, this is deep. Because again, this was at the time when Orion was literally the lord of the sky. So, so, so 300 years before this, Orion was not the lord of the sky. 900 years before this, Orion was not the lord of the skies. And in fact, this may be surprising, but again, Orion or Asa will literally turn around and this same Asa will appear to start to sink again. So in the next thousand years, Asa will not be in the dominant position that it has now. So that means that this prophecy of the coming Osiris that some people say never exists. Well, he exists now. And him literally resurrecting to become this Orion is well aligned with the heavenly geometry. This is why, you know, man, trust me, a man shall come that can read the stars. This is how you read stars. Eh? This is why I'm saying this is beyond... The kindergarten will you know the Bible is a solar book. And Jesus and the 12 disciples are the sun and the 12 zodiac belts. I have all of this knowledge here. Come on, man. Man, I've been saying that since Zeitgeist and before. This is a different level. This is undeniable here. So again, as Brother Vaughn Benjamin would say in the song, eh? born in the time. This is the time. And again, I understand. Uh, Min Taka will not go over the equator. Sahu will begin to go south again. Turn around as such. <laughs> because of the changing of the age. So Sahu or Orion was designed to reach this far. And then return. So let's put it that way. Or this way. You're looking for a next Osiris. When he returns to this position. Maybe th that will be in the next 26,000 years. <laughs> yeah man. So this is how the ancients deal with the heavens family. I don't want to sound, you know, I really don't. But this ain't no cheap talk. This is not no regular conversation you see we have in here. Yeah, you can't just take what we be saying and try to wrap it up with some other conversation. I mean, <laughs> no, this is a different zone. Number one, we're defending Haile Selassie the first. 
and defending the King of Kings with true knowledge and, and precise facts. This is not belief. We are not following nobody's uh, theories or anything like that. We just give thanks that the Father in Zion would have opened the heavens to us and given us an understanding where, you know, these things can clearly be seen and also giving us the ability to express it as well. Yeah. You want to hear something serious, family? Listen to the tiger's nest tonight. And not just the tiger's nest that we're going to be doing from seven until, well, whenever we see it. But after, I'm going to be presenting the program we did on Ronald Reagan and Pope Paul II. You want to hear that. And again, there's a special bonus tirelessness after such. Hey, I pray that this was worthwhile. And give thanks to those who took the time to be with I and I. Looking forward to your presence this evening. Hey, if you know your Bible and you do not know your history, the knowledge of your Bible will become a mystery. It takes some real eyes to realize the real lies that are amongst us. Tiger's nest in your area, the man. King Celestia, yeah, yeah.